Hi everyone, yesterday's news here and today I've got an awesome treat for you. I've got Marta Gabriel, you know, Crystal Viper, but she's also got this cool solo album coming out. It's called Metal Queens and it is a throwback to all the metal goddesses out there. And this one hits hard because it's a lot of the 80s gals and that's my genre, my years and the people that I grew up with, these are my queens as well. So I am so excited. I took a listen to the album. I think it's absolutely fabulous. So how did you decide you wanted to start doing this solo because i know with crystal viper you've done some solo songs along the way but to do a whole album especially dedicated to all the queens of metal out there where did you get your inspiration for this uh well i actually i, I wasn't thinking a lot about this it was like that last last year with uh, crystal viper we started to work on our new album the cult which was released uh, two or three months ago and we, the album was done last year in August. So uh, to not waste entire year, we started to work on some additional projects on which we are working even right now. And uh, I came up with this idea to, re to, to maybe start my solo project and to record a solo album with cover songs. And the, um, why cover songs? Well, first of all, uh, I believe that um, every person on earth has his own favorite song. And this person is singing this song in the kitchen while, you know, cooking the dinner or taking a shower and so on. But when you are a musician, you can, of course, sing your favorite song in the kitchen, but you can also record this song with your bandmate. You can play it in your rehearsal room. You can go on stage with this song. To, you can put it on your album. And you know, this is double fun when you perform this song live even. Because, for example, you go on stage, you are performing your favorite song from your favorite artist and you are having fun. And audience is also having fun because they love their song. Because if they came to see your live show, I'm sure they will, they like this cover song as well. Because I have never recorded a cover song from an artist that haven't influenced me. It means that I always record cover songs from artists that had an impact on myself as a musician or influenced our music uh, when it comes to Crystal Viper and so on. Each of us in my band, uh, has his own metal heroes and so on. And recording cover songs for us, it, it's also a way for us to pay a tribute to our metal heroes, to our favorite bands and artists. And for me, it's also, when it comes to recording cover songs, for me, it's important to, to show to our fans, especially to the youngest one, younger ones, where, what is my musical DNA, you know? where I came from musically and metal queens can show you that this is where I'm where I came from musically this is my favorite genre of metal classic heavy metal especially from the 80s and to be honest I've always loved heavy metal bands with female vocalists so and the other thing is that we wanted to stay busy after recording, you know, Crystal Viper album. We, we were like, we were eager to do another musical thing, another musical project. And I came up with this idea to do this album and everyone was, you know, everyone loved this idea and we decided to do this. And at the beginning, it was difficult for me to choose only those 11 songs because the list was like this. <laughs> It was at least double as you can hear on the album. So I would love in the future to record Metal Queens part two because there is still this list with other artists that I couldn't record for this album. It was, it was for me the only one difficulty actually with this album to choose among all of these artists, songs that I can put on the album. And there are only 11 songs because we wanted to release this album on the vinyl as well. And you have limited time when you want to release the album on the vinyl. So there are 11 and yeah, I would love to record the rest that, that I planned. That would be so great. I yeah, think. And of course, uh, vocally, there are a lot of vocalists on the album that influenced me as an artist, but I also don't want 
people to think that I listen only to heavy metal with female vocalists because this is not true. I have other metal heroes when it comes to vocals, like, you know, Rob Halford, Bruce Dickinson, uh, David DeFace from Virgin Steel, and, and, and Tony Martin from Black Sabbath. He's my vocal god, <laughs> you know? So, yeah, there are many reasons and, and, and many actually cool stories why I decided to record this album. And it was like, you know, I had this idea and we started to work on it on the next day, so. <laughs> it, it went pretty quick <laughs> yeah and I love how you talk about that you don't just love female artists that are in the vocalists or female artists that are in the metal scene themselves and you've also been a strong supporter in the fact that you don't agree with the whole female fronted genre label because it's not a thing and I, I say this all the time please stop sending me PR blasts saying female fronted because I'm not going to read them. Because to me, you don't need it. If you if your music stands on it own, its own, it stands on its own. And I love that you picked artists that I've talked to a few of these as well that have said the same thing, that they don't understand the female fronted genre that's come up in it. Why can't it just be metal? And so I love to hear that the way that you put your spin on these, al these singles that you did, and you've done some that I've wondered that when you do some of these covers, do you ever worry about maybe the blowback from fans or maybe the artists, the, the, the ones that are still alive, especially that they, if they may go, hey, wait, what did you do to my song? Does it ever cross your mind when you're doing it? You know, it's always, um, yes, I do think sometimes if the original artist heard the cover that I recorded, but most of artists that I covered in the past liked my versions. I don't know, maybe they lied to me, but <laughs> maybe they just wanted to be nice, but no, I'm joking right now. But so far, um, if, if I heard from the original artist, it was usually like they, they liked the song. And to be honest with you, it, it's a cool thing to, he to hear back from the original artist, but I actually never thought about that if someone would, for example, say that, just like you said, oh, what you have done to my song or something like that. Because, you know, when I'm recording cover song, I have so much fun and I put all of my heart, you know, into, <clears throat> into recording. So actually this kind of uh, bad emotions are, are not with me while working on cover songs. So, and ju just like you said, I, I would like to go back to this female fronted label. You know, it's sometimes it's funny because people can label bands like that. Let's let's take two bands, for example, Nightwish and Chastain. They are both female fronted bands, but they are completely different. And people need to understand this is not a genre of music. For but for me, it works like a kind of a hint. You know, if someone likes. Uh, women behind the microphone in heavy metal bands, for example, it might be a kind of a hint. So I might like this band. I will take a look, but to it's, it's, it's weird to general generalize it, you know, to, to put the label to, to name all female fronted bands as a genre, because this makes completely no sense, you know? And for me, it was always like, I like the band or not. And it really didn't matter to me if there are female musicians in the band or not. For me, what, what, what is the most important is talent, if the song is good, if I, if I like it, and if I like the band. And if it's a female behind the microphone, yeah, well, yeah. it really doesn't matter for me. But the truth is, I really like female vocalists, so yeah, in some way, it's a it, it might work as a hint, but absolutely not as a genre of music because it's just wrong. <laughs> yeah, and it's it's funny because I've heard from readers and other friends, we've discussed this whole female fronted thing so many times. And I've seen other publicists and labels go, can we please just end this female fronted? It's, it's not a genre. But then also I've heard a really negative side to it that some people say, oh, if I'm seeing something, you know, and I'm reading something and it says female fronted, I'm not even going to give the band a chance because I don't like women singers. And I'm like, that's crap, you know, because there's so many amazing vocalists out there. And I don't know how anybody could like, like Doro, who could not love Doro? I mean, that's, you know, 
come on, that's heavy metal. And so I, I look at that and I just go, wow, you know, you're doing yourself a disservice to label yourself as female fronted. Come out and tell people what genre. Are you heavy metal? Are you thrash metal? Are you symphonic metal? That's going to get people to listen to you more than saying, hey, we're female fronted. I To me, because I'm female, I just doesn't even click with me. I'm just like, so what? I'm a female. You know, I'm not calling dudes bands. Hey, you're male fronted. <laughs> it's kind of weird to me. So, yeah. So let's talk. When you get to the singles on here, you've picked some of the iconic artists and people that definitely resonated with me in my teen years, like Lee Aaron and Wendy O and Doro, especially. She's my metal queen. What was your first experience with music that you heard a female vocalist in heavy metal that just really clicked with you that made you go, wow, you know, women are doing this crap? Uh, well, I started listening to classic heavy metal with bands like virgin steel iron maiden black sabbath and so on and to be honest i was i was pretty young by but back then and i didn't know that there were women singing in those kind of events i don't really remember the moment well i don't remember who showed me warlock for the first time but it was probably the first female fronted band heavy metal band that i heard because I knew some other popular bands, I, I knew the Nightwish existed back then and so on, but I didn't really know heavy metal bands, those classic ones, I didn't know them. And I remember when I heard Warlock for the first time, I was like, what? Is this really a girl behind the microphone? This is freaking amazing. And you know, I was freaking amazed by, by that. Uh, because I was already a singer in a metal band and I didn't know any other band that were playing similar music that I wanted to play. So that was amazing. And I believe Warlock was the first one. And then I started to do more research. Of course, okay, if there's Warlock and there's Doro, there must be more. <laughs> and I discovered Zodiago, discovered Chastain and and the girls school and other things like that. And yeah, now I lo know lots of female fronted. I, I just said that female fronted because this is what we are talking about, but female fronted classic heavy metal bands. What, what I have on mind, of course, classic heavy metal yeah. bands, women behind the microphone. And I started to look more and more and i was so surprised that there were so many great bands and so on and i started to listen to them i i started to some sometimes i was trying to sing in a similar way like this vocalist and so on i remember i was 15 16 something like that and i was trying to sing like leather leon and <laughs> she sounded to me like like you would mix voices from tony martin with uh, with Ronnie James Dio, and this was so amazing to me that woman can sing like that. Yeah, they just blown my mind back <laughs> back then. Yeah, yeah, and you know, I had a conversation with Doro last year, and we were talking about what it was like for her experience in the '80s as a female artist, and just being out on tour. And she was saying how you know, out on tour with Warlock. She didn't have any other females on tour with her. There was nobody to help her get ready, and it was kind of like shocking to me because people don't really think about what we have today with how things have, have advanced and progressed so much that just how early for these earlier artists, the experiences were so different. Do you notice any of that kind of weirdness being a female artist still when you're out on tour or anything that is it this, do you have that similar experience or maybe from early on, do you see that difference yourself? To be honest, uh, not. And I feel totally comfortable when it comes to playing live shows, to travel with my bandmates and to tour in general. But I can tell you why is that. Uh, I started uh, playing instruments in very early age. I was seven when my parents sent me to music school and there were a lot of other children playing instruments. And there were both boys and girls. We have both male and female music teachers and so on. And it was never like someone was treated better or worse because of he was girl or a boy. So I was growing up in a kind of environment with lots of musicians around me and no one was paying attention to, you know, if you are a man or a woman, talent was the most important thing. And if you work hard and what you are achieving, 
And as I was growing in this kind of environment, this is why I feel very comfortable today. So it's not like I feel not comfortable when there are only men around me in the on the backstage and so on. But this is true that there are still not lots of women in metal genre in general, especially in classic heavy metal. There are still not there are still not many of us. But you know, for me it's completely fine. This is what I want to do. Nobody forced me to anything. I am happy what I'm doing. I create. I write music that I really love because you know I I like many genres of metal, but classic heavy metal is still my favorite one. And this is the genre of metal that lives here deep. It's closest to my heart. Yeah. You know. So you know, being woman in metal, I I cannot refer to Doro's words because I I wasn't there in the 80s. I was I was born in the 80s. So <laughs> I have no idea how it's how how things looked like back then. But today for me everything is completely normal. So yeah. That's well, awesome. Good. That's awesome. So let me ask you on the album you actually have a few gentlemen that are working with you on it. Um, I was happy to see like who you actually had working with you as special guests. Yeah, John Gallagher from Raven, and Raven always is just a wild show. That's just crazy. That last time they were in town, you know, the guitar is all sweated down and rusted all across the back. It's being held together with bolts and screws because it's got a crack. I mean, those guys are so wild and fun. It's like thrashable. And then you yes. got Harry Harry Stop. Conklin and Todd Michael Hall. I'm like, how did you pick these guys? And I just wanted to add one thing to Raven on stage. I've seen them a few times already live on stage. And for me, the live show was always like that. I was just waiting when the stage will start to burn. They are so great. Yes, so much energy from those guys on stage. They are, wow, they are amazing. Well, um, all those Three gentlemen you can you can hear uh, on, on Metal Queen's album. I, I'm friends with them. Um, with Todd, I met Todd many years ago um, when he was a singer for American band Jack Star's Burning Star. I went on tour with them as a, as a live guitarist. And this is how I met Todd. And since then, we, you know, we, we remained in touch. We were keep on keeping in touch many times since then and so on. He already recorded guest vocals uh, for Thunder Steel song because with Crystal Viper, we recorded uh, Riot's cover, yeah. Thunder Steel. And I invited Todd as we knew each other. And, and he was already singer for Riot 5. So I thought it would be kind of interesting to invite Riot vocalists to sing together with me in Crystal Viper's Riot cover. And later I recorded with Todd, uh, it was actually, we, re we released it uh, last year, we recorded Shallow Song together, you know, the, this uh, pop song from Lady Gaga from The Star yeah. is Born. It's a great movie and I completely loved the song and Todd as well and we decided to record it together. And when it came to working on uh, Metal Queen, Queen albums, I wanted to invite some of my friends and I thought that inviting my uh, friends who are women would be too obvious. And the truth is, I know so many of them that I, I wouldn't be able to invite all of them, even if, if I would love to, because I just didn't want it to have this kind of situation that I, I invited this friend of mine, but couldn't invite this one because there are not so many songs on the album. And I also wanted to make this album sound more, you know, maybe more unexpected, to be more unexpected, you know, regarding yeah. vocal. That's why I invited male vocalist Todd um, and Harry. And I met Harry many years ago. It was probably in Greece with Crystal Viper. We were playing a live show and he was with one of, one of his bands. I don't remember it, if it was Jack Panzer or, or Titan Force. Anyway, this is how I met Harry and we, we, we became friends immediately. He's so great. He's an amazing person, lovely person and amazing vocalist. And um, when it came to vocalists on this album, I already knew 
how our voices will sound together because as I mentioned before, we thought I already recorded three songs in the past. Not three, two. Two, yes, two songs in the past. And Harry also recorded vocals, guest vocals for one of Crystal Viper albums for Possession album. So I was already working with Harry as well in the past. So I just wanted to, you know, to invite my friends to, to do something cool with them and so on. And with John, I wanted to do something even more unexpected, even though I recorded all bass tracks uh, for Metal Queen's album, I thought it would be a cool idea to invite another bass player. And John is, is amazing. He's super talented bass player. He's super nice person. Uh, we were about to go on tour last year uh, together. Raven, Crystal Viper and uh, Swedish Wolf. But we have this pandemic. This tour was rescheduled so many times. No one knows when it will finally happen. But yeah, since then we, we keep in touch with John and and here we are. <laughs> yeah, last year is, and into this year has been such a crazy environment with COVID and the lack of shows. We're just starting to get them back here in the States. And it's it's been really interesting to see what the rest of the world is doing and heartbreaking at the same time to see so many festivals continue to be put off till next year and knowing that artists survive off of touring and being out there and promoting and it's hard to release an album without touring on it how do you feel releasing an album right now without really being able to tour uh well actually to be honest with you um, releasing those albums for me, both Crystal Viper and Metal Queens, was the only possible way for me to stay active as a musician. And actually, both were done in a kind of intentionally. Last year, at the beginning of the last year, um, I, I remember we were on a German tour, it was in March. And then this pandemic began and we started receiving a lot of info from all of the promoters that, you know, this show is cancelled completely, this one is rescheduled, and so on and so on. And we didn't want it to waste entire year. And in about in April, we decided to start working on the new Crystal Viper album because there was nothing else to do for us. And we knew that we won't be able to tour. But anyway, we, we wanted to do that. You know, it would be... I think it would it would kill myself from the inside, sitting entire year and doing nothing completely. So that's why I, actually the, the album was released so quickly after the previous one. And as well, that's why Metal Queen uh, is getting to be released so soon after our album. And to be honest with you, and this will be kind of a surprise, very soon we will release another thing because we keep ourselves as active as possible. We are still working on songs, composing, recording something and so on. And we already have so many stuff to release. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and I think that's probably the flip side to it. It's a good thing because this is the only time artists have never really been touring. Like everyone, once tour season starts, it's on the road and you're gone and you don't have that time to seriously focus. And this has been like the year and a half of focus time. And I've seen so many albums and hearing from so many artists that they've had time to write and do things that they haven't had a chance to work on or things that they've wanted to really look at in this last year. Did you do any sort of, um, aside from music, but any kind of self-reflection, anything that you maybe added or changed to your lifestyle in the last year? Uh, honestly, this pandemic hasn't impact me a lot because I was mostly working at home on music. So it wasn't, it, it, it hasn't been for me like that, that I was leaving home, going to work. And then the pandemic began and had to start working remotely or because it wasn't like that. The, the only difference for me was that I wasn't able to perform live uh, on stage. Uh, I couldn't travel because I have been completely nowhere for the last 16 months. And the worst thing was that I haven't seen my bandmates since March 2020 because we live in different countries and it was impossible to travel. And actually, thanks to this pandemic, I learned, we all learned one thing. We learned to record music to work 
on music remotely because actually the cult, the latest Crystal Viper album and as well as Metal Queen, uh, Metal Queen's album, they both weren't recorded in the recording studio. And for me, this was the first time that I was recording something at home. So I had to learn a little bit about, you know, the, the recording girl, I had to learn how to become my own engineer when it came to recording because I couldn't do that before because for me, for my entire life, since, since I started to record music, it was like I was going to studio, doing my stuff, going home and I was receiving everything completely done. And but this time it was completely different. So, but in some ways that was cool, you know, because for example, when you are recording vocals and um, when you are working in the recording studio, you have to, you have a very tight schedule, you know, for example, on Tuesday, Wednesday, you go to studio recording vocals and this is your time and you need to record your vocals on those two days because, for example, on the next day, bass player is coming to record his parts and so on. And it didn't matter if you were tired, didn't have a good sleep or were ill, you just had to go, you just had to go to the studio and do your thing, do your job. But when I was recording at home and I was tired, I was like, <laughs> Okay, I can do that tomorrow, right? I don't have to. Do that. So then I had a good sleep and I recorded vocals on the next day. But it was, but absolutely, I don't want you to think that I became more lazy or something like that because everything we did with Crystal Viper and everything we are doing, both with Crystal Viper with Metal Queens, we always have a schedule. So it's like, okay, all guitars, we need to record all guitars by this date or something like that so it's not like we decide to work on something and then everybody's working on that forever so it's never like that we always have a schedule and this is how we work that's awesome and i think you know for everyone that's had to kind of learn this this last year and it's going to create a different style of artistry going forward and i think it's going to also either it's going to give appreciation to the producers and people that are mixing and mastering for you or people are going to be more willing to do things more on their own going forward. So it's a, it's a double-edged sword learning how to do your own recording. Yeah, it was a kind of a learning time for me. Yeah, that's, that's true. That's true. And, um, and I'm super happy right now because it looks like I will see my bandmates uh, next month. So yes, finally, after one year and a half, we will finally meet all together. So yeah, I cannot wait really. <laughs> That's awesome. So let me ask you one last question for your fans that are going to get this album that have been checking you out through Crystal Viper. What do you want them to know about the new music you're doing, what you're working on and what's coming up for them live once you guys get back out on the road? Uh, well, when we'll be back on the road, you can expect expect a lot of songs from the cult album for sure, because it's still it's still hot and we cannot wait to to play those songs live, you know. <clears throat> You are recording albums to get them on tour. <laughs> so, <laughs> the cult has never, be, never been on tour before, so this is the right time to do that. And I also started uh, receiving some offers to take Metal Queen's project on tour. So that would be so great. And I really, really hope that this will happen because I love all of those songs and I want to give them second life, not only on the on the CD and the vinyl, and, but also on stage. And I believe that many fans of this classic heavy metal genre would have a lot of fun when they would hear those songs live again. Absolutely, and I could just imagine taking that out on the road and maybe an, a special appearance from maybe Lee Aaron or Doro or somebody along the way, because you know Lee Aaron's putting out a new album next month, and then Doro's, you know, they're doing the Warlock re-release of live Triumphant Agony in their their live Blu-ray. So I could see some collaborations out on the road that people wouldn't expect would be really fun. Yeah, uh, that would be beautiful. That would be beautiful, especially and you know things like like that are actually possible, especially because where, for example, a festival is happening. There are lots and lots of bands and you always can meet someone you already know or meet some of your friends. And actually, that was, this is very uh, similar situation like 
me and Todd, two years ago, or yeah, two years ago, we recorded this shallow song. And we just wanted to record it and post it on YouTube without, you know, making video or anything like that. But right after we, re we recorded an uh, audio, we found out that Riot 5 and Crystal Viper are playing in Sweden at the Sabaton Opener Festival on the same day and one band after another. <laughs> so we decided to use this, use this occasion and we shot a video for the song. So <laughs> things like that simply happen. And yeah, this is great, you know. And yeah, that's is that when when you are visiting a lot of festivals and i'm sure you know about that you are always seeing the same people you know <laughs> yeah i'm seeing a lot of festivals like that are already announcing for next year and you know i don't know about you i saw the the hellfest lineup is like a seven day thing and it it's so overloaded and i'm like you know, I actually still prefer like my three and four day festivals. Seven is just a little too much for me. And I'm going to see all of those bands on the other festivals anyway. So it's a little manic for me, but I do. I see the same bands on a lot of festivals and it's just because everybody happens to be on tour and you're just kind of hitting those same spaces. And, but you know, if you can get out in front of 30 to 70,000 people, why not you get out and have a great time, bring the music to them. And it's a great experience all around. Yeah. The lineup for Hellfest is for the next year is crazy when i have seen the dates i was like okay this is probably the biggest metal festival that ever happened yeah and i'm already in sweden for sweden rock you know like the week before so it's like am i going to hellfest or am i not going to hellfest <laughs> i mean like can i just do like a day or two of it yeah it's a lot of decisions decisions <laughs> yeah it's that's just insane i mean i've seen people that never travel for festivals that are saying, wait, I think I'm going to go to Hellfest next year. And I'm like, good luck getting a ticket. <laughs> That's the, but you know, and I'm just looking forward to Vakken next year and Sweden Rock and whatever else kind of comes in the way. There's some great smaller festivals that give artists a different audience to check out your music. There's so much good stuff going on out there. Have you ever been at Keep It True Festival in Germany? I have not yet. And that's one that, you know, I've, I'm trying to kind of, balance myself out so I don't always do the same festivals. I mean, Sweden Rock is my always festival, but, you know, Vakken, it every few years. And so there's so many others. And then it's when you get there and you realize how large some of these festivals are, it's kind of frightening. <laughs> uh, keep, it true, keep It True Festival is not that large, but it's a festival about old school music only. So when you go there, you can expect some very old school bands and cool lineup. I remember I, I played with there with Crystal Viper many years ago, and since then I'm at the Keep It True Festival every single year. I believe I haven't missed any edition of that. I think if I'm correct, um, one of our Seattle bands, uh, well, a few of them, Queen uh, Q5 has been out to Keep It True, um, and I think we've got a couple of others like Fifth Angel and stuff have been out there. So it's kind of cool to see like which our, our old school metal bands make these festivals. I'm actually friends with uh, Fifth Angel guys, so. Awesome. <laughs> See, it's, uh, music makes this world so small. Like, I was at Vakken in 2019, and, and I'm standing there, and I run into an artist friend of mine from L.A., and it's like, hey, what are you doing here? Like, you know, it makes the world so small, and it's awesome. So, yeah. yeah. Any, last, any last words before we go? A uh, few words to our listeners. Support your, your favorite bands, buy CDs, buy vinyls, go to live shows and have fun with heavy metal music because heavy metal is awesome. <laughs> it is absolutely awesome. Marta, thank you so much for your time. And it's been awesome chatting with you about metal, females in metal, and your new album, Metal Queens, is out on July 30th. You guys want this album. I've already heard it. It's great. I'm like, I found myself listening to old tracks by the original artists and taking a listen to say, how different is this than the other? And I really love the authentic feel in the album. So I'm super excited for this release for you. I think definitely, because I think I saw one of your press releases where you said, should I do a second album? Yes, do the second one. Because I want to hear what you do with the next one. Because <laughs> I think this is fabulous. Yeah, I would love to do, you know, Metal Queen's part two. And I really hope this will happen because, yeah, it's working on those songs. It was like, was amazing for me. And I would, 
I would love to repeat that. <laughs> yeah, this is going to be a great fun album and I'm so excited for you and I can't wait to see what all your listeners and fans think of the album when it comes out. It's going to be fun to, to chat with people and see what their favorite tracks are and what they want to see you do if you do this when you do like a second one if there's songs that they're hoping that you'll you'll cover. So, that'll be a lot of fun. But thank you so much and let me just Say, guys, really, I really loved the album, and I think you've got to get out there, not only to support Marta in her own solo project, but make sure you're out there supporting Crystal Viper as well. So much good, great metal music going around. Thanks a lot, Marta. Thank you very much for having me and for your support. Thank you very much. <laughs>